should be taken to keep any temperature increase to below 2 degree rise. Um, so as you know, so as soon as you see these pictures, what do you think of? There's an acronym that you should think about. As soon as you, you think, you, you see the pictures of, what is the flag? Of the, okay, this one? <coughs> exactly. So, Copenhagen at what? In some ways or the other, spoke about engaging with these countries, the BRIC countries. Why is it important to engage with these countries? What are the ways or the mechanisms in which we just partner or, or just get into these countries, work with them? This is important and they emphasize on that. And it does not contain any legally binding <coughs> commitments for reducing emissions. Nothing is legally binding. But because these four countries were, are developing and they you know, forged a relationship to actually do their own economics among themselves. It was important to engage with these countries more than the other countries. Copenhagen, Copenhagen Accord, as you know, the long-term goal was to recognize the uh, scientific view that the increase in global temperature should be below 2 degree rise. That was important. I mean, so you could grow, you could increase your industries, you could just bring in more industries in your country, it doesn't matter. 
as long as the global emissions of respective countries put together are not over two degrees. So we're not looking at just one country, we're not looking at just India, we're not looking at just South Africa. We're not looking only at China, we're not looking only at Brazil. The combined emission of carbon dioxide, greenhouse gases, with all these countries put together, should not be higher than 2 degrees. Okay? Question. In the wake of the United States' failure to ratify the Kyoto Protocol, dash. Yes, quick. What are the guesses? Yeah? 